long before the world champions of today, a new game took root in Philadelphia. Baseball wasn't born like a baby, rather it evolved like a species. And the moment when the game as we know it today emerged from its primordial ooze occurred in Philadelphia. There's always been a connection in America between athletics and the way in which we view people. So that if we can be viewed as equals on the baseball diamond, then we can be viewed as equals everywhere else. Baseball had begun its evolution. In 1864, as the Civil War raged on, the Athletic Baseball Club of Philadelphia took to the road. Just four years earlier, they had been a choral singing society, but they got the urge to play a new game with bats and balls. And now, people across Philadelphia and across the nation wanted to join them. The Athletic Club has done more to advance the popularity of the game by visits to towns and villages than almost any other club in the United States. Charles A. Peverelli. Games like baseball have been common in the city for over 30 years, ever since the Olympic Town Ball Club of Philadelphia crossed the river to New Jersey to play the nation's first organized ball game. They are America's first team. They have a constitution, they have rules, they have uniforms. In the original city of Philadelphia, ball playing was illegal, banished to faraway territory like New Jersey and the western banks of the Schuylkill River. After the city and county merged in 1854, Philadelphians found plenty of new land and new opportunities. Kanak Woods, Masters in Jefferson, 25th to 27th, 24th Street up to Columbia Avenue, Columbia Avenue over to Montgomery. You could track the development of the city, the growth of the city, by the positioning of the ballparks. Because informal, naturally formed communities were broken apart by the formality of the grid, People formed more formal organizations, and through these clubs, the game spread through the city of Philadelphia like wildfire. They were a people of joiners, joining clubs for everything. The Civil War brought the game to a wider audience. Baseball at that time would be a middle-class sport. They could actually spare recreational time to uh, enjoy something like baseball or cricket. After the war, the middle class grew by leaps and bounds, and everyone, it seemed, was playing baseball. Where these guys aspire to be gentlemen, but when you start competing, whatever pretense you have of being a gentleman gives way to the skill that somebody else might have. Rivalry sprung up between clubs and between cities. In 1865, the Athletics hired right fielder Al Reach away from the Brooklyn Eckforts. It would be the first time that a player switched cities just to play baseball. The Athletics set him up in business with a little tobacco store. He would sell tickets to the ball games. It would be a hangout for fans. It's what I call creeping commercialism that was getting into this amateur game. You know, you weren't supposed to be paid to play. Baseball fans in City Hall found government jobs for Reach's teammates. Some of these players showed up for work, others didn't even bother. Uh, one player, catcher Patsy Dockney, was said to play ball all afternoon and fight and drink all night in exchange for his $20 weekly salary. While the athletics revolutionized the business of baseball, teacher and civil rights activist Octavius Cato attempted to revolutionize the game's approach to equality. Cato and others um, saw baseball and athletics not simply as an amusement, but really they viewed it as an avenue for pushing black folk forward. Cato's team, the Pythian Club, compiled an extraordinary record, going undefeated in 1867 against other African-American teams. But Cato set his sights on a bigger canvas. The National Association of Baseball Players moved their convention to Philadelphia. And the Pythians want to see if they can become a member. There were some very good, fine ball players on the Pythians. And he was encouraged by the vice president of the athletics to apply for admission. Something like 200 clubs are seeking membership, and 199 of them get in. The members of this committee unanimously report against the admission of any club which may be composed of one or more colored persons. It's the first time that there had ever been 
a color line drawn not only in baseball but in sports. This was several years before the National League was founded in 1876. What would have happened if Cato was seated as a delegate? And from the very beginning of America's national pastime, that blacks were fully integrated into this process, um, you know, I mean, what, what would that have done for race relations? The Pythians continued playing and winning. They played exhibition games against white teams in 1869, losing to the Olympics, but beating the city items. The following year, Cattle turned his attention to the fight for voting rights. The baseball team disbanded in 1870 as the stakes were really lifted. At that time, the most pressing thing was really getting the right to vote and exercising it. On Election Day, 1871, Octavius Cato was murdered in the street by a political operative. Philadelphia mourned his passing with the city's largest public funeral since Abraham Lincoln. Later that month, the Philadelphia Athletics beat the Chicago White Stockings to win the first championship of the newly formed National Association of Professional Baseball Players. In the athletics, we see the past meet the future. When they would take the field against these teams, not only did they want to show them the game, they wanted to beat them as badly as they could. In 1876, the National Association changed its name to the National League, and the athletics hosted the new league's first game in North Philadelphia. They would not last the season. They're paying players at this time. They are trying to charge admission, but not being very successful. So as the years go on, more money is going out than is coming in. In Philadelphia, we still had the sense of this carryover again of club ball. As far as they were concerned, paying admission was unfair. The Philadelphia A's only won like 17 games that year and lost 45. They decided we're not going to make a Western swing and play our commitment of games. The new National League threw them out. And there's a scene in which they, you get a president of the A's crying, saying, we're sorry, we won't do it again. You're kicking out the A's. For seven years, Philadelphia languished without a professional baseball team. A new version of the A's appeared in 1882. And one year later, our reach used money from his cigar business to organize a new team called the Phillies. Baseball had come back to Philadelphia. <laughs>